This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Grace to you and peace in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And welcome to worship at the First Presbyterian Church of Warminster. And a special welcome to those who worship with us through WRDB FM radio. Today's flowers are dedicated to the glory of God by Rita Geddes in loving memory of Dalton Erskine. And our prayer requests this morning are to continue praying for Ramallah and Mohan's infant granddaughter, Nadia, as she receives neonatal intensive care. And please pray for Reverend Peggy as she is recovering from a very recent knee surgery. Our musical gifts are offered by Kathy Worth Balkus on organ and piano, Frank Balkus on flute, and by the Senior Choir, conducted by our Director of Music, Dave Sathrep. Our worship begins with the sounding of the chimes. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let this be known in all the earth. Shout aloud and sing for joy, O royal Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Our worship continues with the prelude.
time to prepare. Prepare the way of the Lord. Advent is a time to prepare our eyes to see the light of Christ. Prepare the way of the Lord. Advent is a time to prepare our hearts to receive the word of Christ. Prepare the way of the Lord. Advent is a time to prepare to share the joy of Christ. Prepare the way of the Lord. Advent is a time to embrace the promise of Christ. Prepare for Jesus, the light of the world. Today, we light the third candle. The first candle reminds us that Advent is a time to wait. The second candle reminds us that Advent is also a time to watch. The third candle teaches us that Advent is a time to prepare. We prepare ourselves in heart, soul, and mind to welcome Jesus, the light of the world. Continue to shine your light in our lives as we look at all you have done, all you are doing, and all that you will do. Amen. And now before turning to scripture, let us pray. Loving God, by your word, you give light to the soul. Pour out on us the spirit of wisdom and understanding that our hearts and minds may be opened to know your truth and your way. Amen. Uh, today's reading is from Zephaniah, chapter 3, verses 14 to 20. Sing aloud, O daughter Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgment against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall fear disaster no more. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord, your God, is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. 
He will exalt over you with loud singing as on a day of festival. I will remove disaster from you so that you will not bear reproach for it. I will deal with all of your oppressors at that time, and I will give you the lame and gather the outcasts, and I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time, I will bring you home. At the time when I gather you, for I will make you renowned, and I will uh, renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth. When I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. Our next reading is from Isaiah chapter 12, verses 2 to 6. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid, for the Lord God is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. And with joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. And you will say, in that day, give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make known his deeds among the nations. Proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let this be done in all the earth. Shout aloud and sing for joy, O royal Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Our next reading this morning is from Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 9. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. Our gospel lesson is from Luke chapter 3, verses 7 through 18. John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now, the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, what then should we do? In reply, he said to them, whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none, and whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they asked him, Teacher, what should we do? He said to them, Collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers also asked him, And we, what should we do? He said to them, do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusation, and be satisfied with your wages. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water. But one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So, with many other exhortations, he proclaimed the good news to the people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. The first time I preached from today's passages on this, the third Sunday of Advent, 
was nine years ago in 2012. I had prepared a sermon earlier that week, but like most preachers that Sunday, I had to rewrite it just two days earlier, December 14th, when 20 students and six teachers and school administrators lost their lives during the Sandy Hook Elementary shooting in Newtown, Connecticut. That Sunday morning, two days later, every heart in the sanctuary was broken, including mine. And I assume the same was true for those of you who worshiped that day. But broken is too narrow a term for how our hearts were feeling. They also felt hopeless, helpless, overwhelmed. And the poignancy of lighting the Advent candle of joy that morning was almost too much to bear. The scripture lessons that day were the same as today's. We heard Isaiah tell us to shout aloud and sing for joy, O royal Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Then the Apostle Paul urged us to rejoice in the Lord always. And then John the Baptist confronted us with, you brood of vipers. And that pretty much summed up how we saw ourselves that morning, suspended between two realities attested throughout scripture, the joyous glory and beauty of God's saving presence and the deadly ugliness of a world entangled in sin and evil like a brood of vipers. And along with our sadness, we felt ashamed by how humanity time and again fails to uproot the sources of violence in our communities and to protect our most vulnerable neighbors from harm. And that ancient prayer of Advent seemed more desperate than ever before. Come, Lord Jesus, come quickly, come now, save us, heal us. We brought before God that morning our grief, our hopelessness, our shame. And we raised the same question the crowds asked John on the banks of the River Jordan. What then should we do? It's in times such as these that John the Baptist's message reminds us that repentance really is the only thing we can do. That's where everything begins for what we should do. Now, while commercial celebrations of Christmas distract us from what's dark in our world, Christians prepare for the celebration by taking a long, hard look at the world and our lives within it and repenting. It means turning away from our giving up to how things are and turning toward God to conform us to how things one day will be. I like how the Greek Orthodox Church in America defines repentance. It says, repentance is a fundamental transformation of outlook, of our vision of the world and of ourselves, and a new way of loving others and God. Repentance takes action. It's more than a posture of contrition or feeling ashamed, it's not a feeling. Repentance changes not only how we see things, but also how we do things. Worship itself is an act of repentance. Prayer 
is an act of repentance. Discipleship and service are forms of repentance. All these things require us to turn away from ourselves and turn away from evil and to turn toward God and neighbor and loving God and neighbor, not in the abstract, but in concrete ways. Because when we do that, John the Baptist tells us, we are bearing fruits of God's love and justice. So the Baptist tells us to prepare the way of the Lord by taking a long, hard look at our world and our lives within it and repenting. And in similar manner, the Apostle Paul invites us to take the long, hard look at our world and our lives within it and rejoicing. Now, if we read Paul's words to the Philippians to rejoice out of context, those words might sound like, sweet platitudes like we find in Christmas cards, full of positive thinking and completely untethered to the real struggles of life. And we Christians sometimes are guilty of adopting his words in that spirit. But Paul, when he writes this letter to the Philippians, he's speaking words of rejoicing right into the heart of darkness because he's writing these words while he is imprisoned for preaching the gospel. And he's writing these words to a community of believers who themselves are suffering from poverty, death, and conflict both within the church and from without. And Paul can say these words to them and they can receive them with joy because while they know they live steeped in this world and its chaos, they live more deeply in the Lord whose presence is near, giving them gifts of hope, faith, and love, and equipping them for life in the present and for the life to come. So for the Philippians, rejoicing is a isn't about numbing themselves from the pain and fear of present circumstances. Rejoicing is a way of repenting and the beginning of bearing fruits, real fruit, fruits of the spirit that have real consequences, not just for themselves, but for everyone around them. Let your gentleness be known to all, Paul says. Make what you have, make what you have been given real for others. And the same is true for us. Time and again, we hold vigil for lives lost and communities touched by pain and death. But as Christians, we also hold a vigil of waiting for God's promised future to come. And while the wait may seem endless, that's no reason to postpone our rejoicing. Because while we wait for the kingdom, we're called to rejoice in it, just as Paul did in prison, just as the, as the Philippians did in their suffering and conflict. And just as we'll hear Mary do next week, when she opens her mouth and gives praise for God's kingdom as though it has already come. And so we rejoice with them because we know that Christ is here. Christ is present. Christ is at work among us and through us. And so rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Rejoice in the dark present for that future day that has already come among us in Christ Jesus. Rejoice in the life that he poured out for us so that we could pour out his love toward others. Rejoice that even when our hands are too weak and our hearts are too heavy, 
by his spirit, we can lift our heads, open our mouths, and sing. Rejoice, my friends, even as we cry out, come, Lord Jesus, let us also rejoice. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us now turn our hearts to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, ruler of the universe, creator of light and darkness. In this holy season, when the sun's light is swallowed up by the growing darkness of the night, you renew your promise to reveal among us the splendor of your glory made flesh and visible to us in Jesus Christ, your son. Through the prophets, you teach us to hope for his reign of peace. Through your spirit, you give sight to our souls that we may rejoice in your glory in the presence of Christ. We pray that you strengthen us when we are weak and support us in our efforts to do your will and free our tongues to rejoice and to sing your praise. We pray that you sustain those among us who need your healing touch, especially Nadia and Peggy. Bring wholeness to those who are sick. Give hope to the dying. Comfort those who mourn. Uphold all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, not only those we know and love, but also those known only to you. May they know the peace and joy of your love and compassion. Almighty God, you made us and all things to serve you. Now prepare the world for your rule. 
Come quickly to save us so that wars and violence shall end and all your children may live in peace, honoring one another with justice and love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forget our forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power. And the glory forever. Amen. And now may we go in peace and with rejoicing to love and serve the Lord and to love and serve our neighbor. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen.